We completed a clinical trial investigating the role of micro osteoperforations in the rate of tooth movement and the expression of inflammatory markers. During normal orthodontic tooth movement, inflammatory markers play an important role in the recruiting of inflammatory cells and osteoclast precursors, and then through the rank and rank ligand pathway, they play an important role in stimulating the differentiation of osteoclasts from these precursor cells. And then osteoclasts go on to resorb the bone that allows the tooth to move. The approach we took in this clinical trial was to increase the expression of these inflammatory markers using a minor injury to the bone. When we were doing the animal studies, we will apply a small macro perforation in front of the first molar of the maxilla in, this, in the rats and then we apply orthodontics force and we time the rate of the tooth movement in compare with the control that did not receive this macro perforation. I mean, notice as soon as we apply the macro perforation, the rate of tooth movement increase almost close to two to three fold faster than the control. But we didn't have enough evidence for human study. So we decided to have a clinical trial to demonstrate that application of the same macro perforations in human can accelerate the rate of tooth movement significantly. Patients were randomly assigned to one of two study groups, experimental and control. In both groups, patients were referred for extraction of upper first premolars, and the upper arch was bonded with fixed appliance. In both groups, a temporary anchorage device, a TAD, was placed between the second premolar and the first molar. In both groups, canines were retracted using a calibrated 100 gram nitide closing coil spring connected from the TAD to a power arm on the canine bracket that allowed the application of the force closer to the center of resistance of the tooth. In addition, the experimental group received three micro perforations on either the right or the left side prior to initiation of canine retraction. One day later, it's completely healed. There's no difference between the side that received the, the procedure and the control side. There's no signs of inflammation or injury, no bleeding. After 28 days, canine retraction in the group that received the microosteoperforations were clinically obvious, while the canine retraction in the control group or the contralateral side of the experimental subjects that did not receive microosteoperforations was minuscule. Alginate impressions were taken immediately before canine retraction and 28 days after initiation of canine retraction to monitor the rate of tooth movement. We found a 2.3-fold increase in the rate of canine retraction in the presence of microosteoperforation when compared to control. In compared with the control, the expression of many inflammatory markers such as interleukin-1, TNF-alpha, interleukin-6, and CCL2 increase significantly in 24 hours. These markers are the ones that activate the osteoclast and recruit them to the area. The osteoclast, if you remember, are the ones that control the rate of bone resorption, and rate of bone resorption control the rate of tooth movement. Therefore, we can conclude that macroperforation, by increasing the expression of inflammatory markers, can increase the rate of tooth movement and decrease their length of treatment time. We asked the patients in the study to assess their level of discomfort using a numeric rating scale. In this study, we found out that there were no difference in the level of pain or discomfort between the patients that received the osteoperforations and the control subjects that did not receive the procedure. So the procedure is very simple. First, you apply a topical. Then you do a local infiltration for making it a little bit more numb. After that, you adjust your appliance. Based on the where you want to apply your appliance, you can select your depth. You need about two or three millimeters inside the bone. That's enough. We perform the micro osteoperforations through the gum. The osteoperforations can be superficial. We could perforate the cortical plate, but you don't need to go so deep as to risk uh, damaging any tooth structure. The appliance have a light detector. As soon as you reach that depth, it turns on, that shows that you achieved the goal that you wanted. You take it back and now the procedure is over. In total, it should not take more than 30 seconds to one minute. We're amplifying the patient's response to the orthodontic forces. 
So overall, we found that microosteal perforations are a safe, efficient, and very comfortable way to accelerate orthodontic tooth movement. We could reduce the duration of orthodontic treatment more than 60% with this minor procedure, with all the benefits to the patients and, uh, and the orthodontist. But what is left for future to study? Remember, still we need to discover how often we need to apply this macro perforation. Second, how many of these macro perforations is needed? We are conducting ongoing clinical trials to find the answers to these questions. How many osteoperforations? How frequently would we need to perform the procedure during the orthodontic treatment? And we hope to report soon on all of this. Thank you.